Welcome to the WSL Post Show. Day two is a wrap. Came a little earlier than we thought it would, but the conditions were getting pretty tricky out there. And uh, we had to call it. But we've got some big heats to complete that round of 32. We'll have a chat about some of those matchups soon. But we saw huge results today, obviously getting through the elimination round of the women. And we've actually set up the quarterfinals too for the women's event. And it is going to be a new winner on the trophy at the completion of this contest. But we also uh, saw some big names fall out of the mix on the men's side as well. Ronnie Blakey joined by Felicity and Rich. Busy morning. We got through a lot. We did get through a lot. I love that we had a location change today. We went from the bowl to Winky. Different style of surfing, different approach. Surface had to be a bit more adaptable. And uh, we saw some big upsets. And we we're did. Gonna, <laughs> a new women's winner. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Rich, uh, a chance for a new men's winner too, Ethan. Uh, he, he just survived <laughs> that one. He's got the chance to go back to back still. But for a moment there, it, it looked like that the George Pitar was going to get the job done. Yeah, I, I was uh, just on the edge of my seat that whole heat, actually. Obviously, George Pitar from my uh, home beach at Manly. And, uh, you know, the whole I, my feed was lighting up just with encouragement for him through the heat. And then I won't go into what was going on <laughs> after oh, the heat. What, what do you think? Do you think that he got uh, enough done? No, I Oh, look, at that wave that Ethan got in that final moment was unbelievable. You know, yes, it was a smaller wave, but the surfing he did on it was undeniable. It was incredible. So, yes, I think Ethan got the score in the end, uh, as much as it pains me to say it. But, you know, great, that's what great champions are made of. Good on him. Yeah, we'll, we'll get the crew down at Manly to send all your gear down here. <laughs> and, with the, move. and with that comment, <laughs> I've officially been, uh, you know, kicked out of Manly. Oh, no. The big story early on, though, uh, on the men's side was Morgan Siblick upsetting Jack Robinson. Oh, huge. Uh, huge. Jack, uh, he's been a little under, weather, under the weather coming into this contest. But Morgan, we knew he was going to be dangerous. We marked him early on. CT experience and also just in the back of his mind can you know, bank that he's beaten title contenders before. For sure. I mean, Morgan's been in that final five conversation. He finished fifth in the world before, so you just can't count him out. Jack started out with a bang. He started out with a seven and was looking spicy. But then it was Morgan that just had that little bit of extra flair and just the little bit extra tail throw. He was giving a bit more mayo than what Jack was. <laughs> I can't help but think that maybe Jack was just leaving a little bit in the tank. He had a couple of opportunities where I thought maybe he could have pushed a little bit harder. There was that one moment in the heat where Jack actually went up for an air, made it, came out down and went straight into a layback, but similar to that one, but didn't make it. And I feel like if he would have made that layback, he was on his way to a good score. Rich, just two surfers that were seriously switched on. And Jack, he, he usually reserves his emotions, but uh, frustrated with that result. That one meant a lot. You could tell Jack was ripping. Make no mistake, he was on. But this man, it's great to see him back in that form that we saw a couple of years ago during those COVID years when he came on and upset the whole world to us. So uh, great to see Morgan back in form, ripping again, mate. He could do, keep doing some damage in this one. Yeah, I said it before, uh, always very dangerous when you can see Morgan's teeth. The, the, that usually means there's a big smile there. There's a lot of <laughs> confidence there. And, uh, yeah, he's going to be hard to stop as he moves through the rounds here. Yeah, well, I feel like he was doing his best surfing when he was kind of not – didn't have that pressure and expectation around him. He was smiling. He was joking. He was walking around going, oh, yeah, this is unreal fun. And, you know, he was just – taking people down and then he got serious and maybe the pressure of it all got to him and the surfing actually suffered he wasn't surfing as well full stop but he's back today we saw the brilliance again uh, we've obviously been touching on it a, a lot this is the time for competitors below the cut line to start making their move and and give themselves a, a fighting chance going into stop number five felicity and we saw a rookie stand up in a big way on the women's side Sawyer Limblad, she was so impressive in her heat today oh wasn't she and She's someone that really, really, really needed that result. She had tough heat, got the win, and yeah, I, that was some of the best backhand surfing I saw all day. I know Caroline put up a really good number as well, but in my books, I just really enjoyed se seeing Sawyer uh, just yeah come to fruition on that backhand attack, and yeah, just so sharp, so precise, and a lot of power there too. Molly Picklum's just looked like oh. just the, the surfer to beat. 
Rich, uh, this season. Just carried such an incredible momentum through those first couple of uh, events, especially. Looking so comfortable in the, the yellow jersey in the lead up to this event, but it's got to be said, it looked like there was nerves in, in all her performances. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is, but, uh, you know, I said it uh, even in the in the uh, morning show, the Dawn Patrol show that we did, we haven't seen her best surfing down here yet, and I stand by it. I still think Molly's got more to give. I think she needs to figure this wave out a little more, and as you said, Ron, she did look a little bit nervous, but this lady here, didn't she put on a show? Just that strong backhand attack, and I actually favour the goofy footers down here at Winky Pop <laughs> squaring up coming around those sections and uh, Molly just a couple little slips you know the rails aren't as clean as they normally are she was probably better in this heat than any other but uh, Sawyer Lindblad set the pace and, and put the pressure on I think it was also Sawyer's wave selection she just had this you can see it here really clean wave face and just really smooth surfing I feel like yeah just Molly obviously had to get through that elimination round this morning. I thought maybe she could continue with a little bit of that, with a little bit of that momentum, but yeah, just unfortunately, just not quite cutting the mustard. She did go for this little air here at the end and throw the, throws the hands up like, oh, I don't know if I did enough, and she knew she didn't. So pumped to see Sawyer get a win though, because she had, she really needs this result. She needs to keep charging through this comp if she wants to keep her uh, tour dreams alive. That's right. Into the uh, the quarters for the first time charging up those rankings. It's been really fun to have a look at that new feature on worldsurfleague.com, able to track the competitors and, and they're adding to their points tallies as they move through the rounds here. But Sawyer Lindblad, super impressive performance once again, puts up another solid heat score, but this time it's the difference to Portugal. It's enough to get her through to the quarterfinals. <laughs> but uh, let's quickly get caught up with Ethan Ewing as uh, we have a look at the replay of that final Way for him, Rich. This is the one that got him over the line. Yeah, absolutely. That first turn was absolutely ferocious. Just complete power and commitment. And uh, it was a four-turn combination. So much power, so much speed, so much flow in between all the turns. It sort of it negated the fact that it was a slightly smaller wave. He did enough. He's with, Vo with Vorno now. Let's see how he's feeling after a close one, Vorno. Yeah, the defending champ in world number two taken to the absolute limit by Georgie Batar, the, uh, the young Grom, the upstart. How confident were you, Ethan, that you got the score on that last wave? Um, yeah, I felt pretty good about it. I mean, I haven't, I didn't see, I haven't seen the, the, the waves yet on film, but um, yeah, it felt better than my, my other wave, to be honest. But uh, yeah, that was challenging conditions out there. George is uh, such a good surfer and yeah, I made some mistakes, but uh, yeah, stoked to get through. Mate, it's been a massive day of upsets. When you see big names sort of falling out of the draw, uh, it, does it get into your head at all, or how hard is it to just stick to your game plan? Um, yeah, I did see there was a lot of upsets for sure, but I was trying to just focus on myself. Um, but yeah, like I said, a lot of mistakes and a lot of things to work on for the next round, and yeah, looking forward to improving. Awesome, mate. Well, I'm probably not going to keep you because we're going to get swamped by the uh, tide. I didn't realise how tall you are either. <laughs> <laughs> no, congratulations, mate. Look forward to seeing you the next round. Perfect. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, Ethan, yeah, relieved. Awesome. But he uh, he kind of knew that uh, that wave was going to be better. It ended up being only slightly better than his other scoring ride. And uh, he survived a, a very close one. And probably took a little more risk in the early stages of that heat than he needed to rich he kind of went progressive when he's relied on his power so much the the high percentage play he kind of threw it out the window yeah we were watching it uh, in the green room there and we go hang on a minute what's it this is this is outside the box of what ethan normally <laughs> does and how he normally approaches a heat but then he clicked back into gear he tidied it up but as he said he he identified that he made a few mistakes there and I reckon maybe the, the wild card got him worried a little bit. So, you know, a great, that's a tip of the cap to George. I mean, he competed incredibly well. He stood up to one of the, our great champions on the tour at the moment. So I'm stoked for the young lad. He can go and watch the replays and break it down. Yeah, that's for, for sure. A Challenger Series surfer getting his first crack at a championship tour event and he dropped excellent numbers. Yep. Let's see how he's feeling after that loss. Well, Georgie Batar, mate, obviously disappointed to have that berth in the round of 16 just ripped out of your grasp at the last second but fair dinkum you just put together such a great heat and you really took it to the world number two thanks Vaughn yeah I don't know it was actually really tricky out there like the waves it was really hard to time it because it was so bumpy but um it was a slow start and then we managed to sort of get a couple back to back at the end and I don't know I felt like I put a couple together but I definitely left some meat on the bone and 
I turned around when I was finished that last one and um, just saw him just slapping it to the inside and I was like, it's going to be close and it just didn't go my way, but that's all right. Gave it a crack. Mate, was there any point in the heat where you dared to dream? Because, uh, yeah, you really built well through it and you got a couple of end section clouts in there that were just all class. Yeah, I, I definitely after the 6.9, I was like, oh, there's like, like, there was like a minute 20 to go at one point and I was like, just go flat, please go flat. Like, <laughs> don't give him a chance. But um, I don't know, he, I was just knew if a wave came, he was probably going to convert. Like, he's such a crazy, like, crazy good surfer. And I don't know, I'm just happy to sort of have, sort of put it to him a bit, even though it was a tricky heat, but it was a good experience in itself. Longest minute and a half of, half of your life there, mate. Um, Look, uh, I think over the past couple of days, you know, we've really got to know who you are, what you're made of. Some of your performances have just been incredible. That one yesterday in particular, just uh, a real, I don't know, something we can really put our hands, uh, sorry, <laughs> something we can really get behind, mate, because uh, it was a great performance. You must be stoked. What's the plan for the rest of the year? Yeah, thank you. I don't know, I was, I was definitely happy to get that wave yesterday and then to sort of put a couple little turns together here it felt nice. but um. I don't know, just reset. I think maybe I might have a chance of getting into WA. I'm not sure yet, but um, definitely reset for the challenges and just take this type of experience like, at this pressure level and take it into the challenges and see how we go. But definitely looking forward to Snapper and the rest of the year. Well done, mate. Uh, I think everyone back at Manly Beach will be absolutely frothing. And uh, yeah, we're so stoked for you. Great showing. Yeah, thank you. And shout out to all the North Stain lads and all the people in Vanuatu as well. Really appreciate all your support. Uh, help tapes. The cheers, guys. Well done, mate. <laughs> An amazing run here for the winner of the Rip Curl Trials, George Pitar, and pushing Ethan Ewing at uh, one of his favourite stops. Ethan's bigger event here. He survived a close one there when you look at the numbers, Rick. Yeah, it was a really tight heap. And uh, George Pitta, he's, he's made a bold statement uh, and he wants to be on the tour. And an experience like this, getting that chance just makes you want to have it more and more. It gives you a little taste and you go, ah, that's exactly where I want to be. Some amazing wildcard stories uh, coming through uh, in the early rounds of this event. And we've got another one as our Boost Mobile heat of the day. And this one, it's another highlight moment for Ellie Harrison. What a huge moment for her in front, in front of family and friends. Oh, it's such a moment for Ellie. And, you know, she came up against a really hard opponent in Tyler Wright, who was going for her third bell. Obviously, Tyler, she's got had bells back to back the last couple of years, which is super impressive. And I thought Tyler was looking so in form in, in, during this contest from what I'd seen. But, you know, Ellie is actually that part of that next sort of crop of Australian young females coming up the ranks, you know, just behind Molly Picklam. And we really got to see what she has in um, in her arsenal today. Just beautiful surfing, being able to release the fins like that, just dropping big scores, 7.33 and a 6.4 to take down Tyler Wright, two-time world champ. Amazing, yeah. No, make no mistake about it. Tyler was the, the surfer to beat in this event. This is her her pet event, chasing three event wins, Rich. And in the early rounds, and even in this heat, just looking so on. She was ripping. She was totally on fire in this heat. And uh, I actually thought she was a little undercooked in some of those earlier waves that she took off on. But when I looked back and I looked at the entirety of it all and the wave choice and the, the bigger waves that Ellie got, then I think she got the win. Um, but yeah, a, a great performance here uh, under pressure with all the support of the locals behind her. You know, she's, she's making a bold statement as well. She wants to be on the tour and uh, good experience for the youngster. 100%. I mean, her first seat, she took down Molly. Now she's taken down Tower. I mean, who next? Oh, man. It's going to be uh, intense. <laughs> We're going to find out yeah. in a second. But really uh, solid numbers. I think, you know, she, she killed Tyler Wright with wave selection. Yeah. Uh, she got on bigger waves. She did do some, some really solid stuff. Not a, a whole lot in it. But Ellie Harrison keeps the dream alive. We have seen uh, wild cards go uh, a long way in the draw here at the Rick Curl Pro Bells Beach. We wonder if she could uh, complete the dream. But let's have a look at the Bailey Ladders quarterfinal bracket here. Big matchup for her up against Joanne DeFay, who is the new number one on the rankings, the live rankings. That could change uh, depending on how things fall on, on finals day. But it's, it's going to be a big challenge for Ellie. Yeah, that's a massive challenge because Joanne's just looked really in form. Obviously, coming off fresh off a win in Portugal, straight here to Bells. It suits her surfing. But I mean, quarter two, three, and four as well. I mean, they're all stacked heats. I'm particularly looking forward to the all goofy showdown, heat three, Caroline and Sawyer. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that that back half of the of the draw there, those three and four quarterfinals, they're stacked. That's going to be uh, incredible to watch. It sure is. Uh, of course, one of our uh, favourite features at any WSL spot on the championship tour is the Rising Tides and this event, Bells. We've had some amazing stories come out of this contest. Obviously, India Robertson took part as a, a caddy at this event, <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're just inspiring that next generation. So uh, let's see how the Groms went with the world's best surfers. This is Amelia. Amelia is five years old. Who's your favourite surfer? I don't know. You don't know. You don't have a favourite. But you could say me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're down here at Bells. The waves are pumping. And we've got around 30 or so girls heading out for the Rising Tides program in collaboration with my business, Queen and Me. We just ran a 30 minute workshop with all of the girls learning about values and goals and now they get to take all of that into the lineup and go catch a few waves with some of their idols. Oh, today Rising Tide was just like, it was monumental. It was just pumping bells. What impressed me the most, these guys. Did you have fun? Yeah. It's so awesome. Just to be a part of every stop is super cool. All the girls from around the world, they haven't met each other, but I'm sure they will someday. The future is very bright. It was so fun to see so many girls out in the lineup at one of the most iconic places in the world. No matter what car park you go to now in Australia, there's this buzz of, of female surfers and, and women in the lineup, and you paddle out and Oh, that just feels so good because uh, that wasn't the case when I was a girl. This is one of my biggest passions, helping the next generation. It's really fulfilling for me and I just love to give back, especially to my local community. That is so awesome. You can see what it means to the, the Groms, but for the competitors as well, Felicity, you know, it's a, a really good chance for them to uh, pass on some of their knowledge. But... Um, more often than not, they're just there to provide a lot of inspiration and, and feel the stoke. Oh, for sure. I think one of the coolest things out of that piece I heard Gab uh, Gabrielle O'Brien say was, you know, the, she's going up to all these rising tides uh, that the, uh, you know, that it's, the tour is putting on. And one day, eventually, these girls, you know, if they aspire to be on tour, they're probably going to meet each other one day, which is a really cool thing. You know, you just think about that story of India Robinson. I know Ellie Harrison has been a part of them. So, yeah, if you can't see, you can't be. It's such a great program and, uh, yeah, beautiful to see. Pretty fun, Rich. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, to get that opportunity to surf with your heroes, pretty special. Like, you know, I was lucky enough at Manly Beach to have sort of Barton Lynch and Rob Bain, and, you know, I'd relish in the chance to even talk to those guys or be in the lineup with them. So, you know, this is a great initiative from the WSL. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. Uh, the forecast, obviously, it kind of deteriorated a, a little bit this afternoon, so we decided not to send out the remainder of those uh, men's round of 32. What surf lines presenting, Rich? the rest of the window? Uh, well, obviously this well, we've seen it. It's deteriorated over the last couple of days. It, uh, it arrived with a vengeance and it's slowly tapered off and we've had this sort of onshore, you know, southerly wind uh, coming down the line here. So it's, it's ruffled things up a little bit. We've put it on hold. So I think tomorrow I feel like we might be doing Easter egg shopping. But, <laughs> however, we will come down and check it out. Uh, you know, we've still got three to five foot faces. I think there's going to be very rideable waves tomorrow, but whether it's contestables, there's a question mark around it. Friday and then into Saturday and Sunday, it's looking better. We originally thought Saturday was going to be the day, but right now it looks like it's pushed back to Sunday. So we could get a really fun Easter weekend. Yeah, uh, just liking the, the fact that there's going to be a couple of pulses too uh, over that weekend. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed to rock up here and hopefully get some uh, heats underway. Again, like you said, you know, we'll turn up again tomorrow. Oh, we'll come here in the morning and check it out. Look at it. Definitely. We've got to come down. Yeah, we have to. Let's dive into the bio gland daily dose. Our top five moments from day two of competition here at the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach presented by Bonsoy. And uh, this is always a lot of fun. We're going to kick things off with one of the sharpest performances I think that we saw today. Samuel Pupo just on a magic board, Rich, and just coming to life. Yeah, the Zero Gravity JS and uh, one of the spiciest performances we saw all day long. Samuel Pupo just was on a total heater. 
just uh, playing and toying with these little waves out here, drifting over these sections. So much speed and agility. And uh, one of the fastest performances we saw today. This has been a brick wall for him uh, this round of 32. So he's breaking into the round of 16 for the first time this season. Couldn't have come at a better time. It was at the expense of Leonardo Fioravanti, who was looking pretty frustrated there. But uh, Miguel Pupo happy for his bro. And then, uh, of course, we had Caroline Marks, the reigning world champion, who's had some big results here in the past. Could she be our Bells champ this year? Wow, I wouldn't put it past her. I absolutely love the way she surfs on her backhand. She put on an absolute clinic. Highest wave, uh, 8.67, uh, 8 and uh, highest heat total, 15.67. So beautiful. Really uh, impressive. At number three, Siblik upsets Jack Robinson, a former CT campaigner, been to the WSL finals before. A real power nugget with plenty of punch. Uh, great to see the Nova Castrian back in form here. Some of the best performances on the forehand. Uh, riding the sharp eye, we saw Morks just uh, hammering these sections. Jeez, he had a hard heat up against an inform. Jack Robinson as well. Really good battle this, the, between these two. Both surfers really putting on a show. But Morgan is making his way through to that round of 16. Really impressed by Sawyer Limblad in tears after a losing performance in Portugal but just gathered her emotions and put it into this performance. Oh, she did. I was so impressed with this. She had such a hard heat coming up against world number one, Molly Picklum, and she just took it to her with surfing like this on her backhand, just turn after turn. It's just precision surfing. I mean, Molly gave it to her too, really. Wasn't an easy battle, but yeah, Sawyer just locking in that 8.5 and 717. Yeah, just was sort of destroying Molly, actually. I wouldn't say it was an easy battle. I mean, it, it, Sawyer just went to town. She did, super solid, great backhand approach. You do see shades of, of Caroline Marks in, yeah. in her style, but it is definitely unique to her. But owning the number one spot in the Biogland Daily Dose for a second day in a row is Ellie Harrison, the 18-year-old from Barwon Heads, getting the job done and overcoming one of the toughest surfers in the women's drawer in Tyler Wright. Yeah, well, we thought uh, we were going to see Tyler Wright get the three-peat done, but uh, Ellie Harrison just distinguishing those dreams. And uh, she did it in fine form up against an in-form Tyler Wright. It wasn't an easy beat, but she found the best waves and she converted on them. This is a huge step in the career of Ellie Harrison. Yeah, just powered uh, her way through her first run at the Challenger Series last season, finished 12th. That's pretty impressive. That, that was a really stacked field, a lot of talent in those Challenger Series ranks. But to, to rock up here after a victory at Surfest, carried that momentum through to Bells. You know, she's a, proven to be a real force in this event. She is, and uh, I have a funny feeling that she might continue to keep going all the way. Wow, I like it. Uh, Ellie Harrison, she's definitely got the support of the hometown crowd. Another big day of competition here at the Ripkell Pro Bells Beach, presented by Bonsoy. We'll be back down here nice and early tomorrow. We'll have a 7.40 call, 7.45 call for a possible 8 o'clock start. Right now, though, it's time for, for some highlights. We'll see you tomorrow.
This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.